Well, it's been a short day turnaround for both of these teams, particularly for Wales, maybe only 12 hours less than France. But that is a short five days, I would suggest, Philippa. Many of the teams Relief, in this, uh, Six Nations, a lot of these international teams are actually amateur, so they go into work, they their, their, their lives problems. around being uh, these professional athletes as well. So, if there's one thing that female athletes get used to, is uh, it's quick recovery as best as they can. Well, the weather has been mixed, it's fair to say, here in North Wales. They've had some really good weather leading up to today, and then this morning the pitch was deluged ended by lunchtime and the sun came back out and then the rain decided to turn the taps back on and then we've had the sun on so I'm not sure whether we got raincoats or thermal blocker on but it'll be interesting to see how the pitch goes because obviously it is going to be quite soft underfoot. Yeah, and you know what? That may just trouble the uh, the French. The forwards are incredibly strong, strong forwards. But are they going to lose their footing? I don't know. The French backs love to play with that ball, so hopefully it will stay strong underfoot for them. And the eye releasing that back line no way through for Caroline Drouin. Release the now. Physical presence of Carl and Eason. They really are a case of rapier and scimitar in that French midfield. An interesting balance. Run away, eight. Keeping uh, Camille Boudot on the bench, and she was one of the standout performers in those opening rounds for Le Bleu. Duval unable to make any significant headway. This Caroline Bougeard. Duval keeping it moving. Good line speed led by Lillicrat said she had to lead from the front and she started as she means to go on the kick over the top for Banay Banay juggling with it but the attention of two red defenders just putting the winger off wearing 11 but playing on the right wing such a threat for France yeah and that's great intention to see from both sides there that's Wales with the line speed they're wanting to get up in the face of the French but then equally the French are going to look to attack every opportunity just dinking it over the top there for Banay who has been incredibly threatening in this Six Nations campaign. Yeah Banay scored against the Irish, scored against the Scots and then had a brace against Italy as well. Crouch! Point! This French back line. Set finds its gears, can mesh its gears, is a frightening prospect. Sean of Harris. Good work from the number eight. Back, back, back. Thomas. Feeds out to Lillicrap. And here goes Siobhan Lillicrap, taking her team up to halfway. Snow Sill. Throwing it a bit, hopefully, in the midfield as it came up. Pat ball out there, just going to have to look after the ball, it's still in home clutches right now. The forwards amassing in midfield again, led by Alicia Butchers, who had such an outstanding game at the Principality. Good anticipation from Bujart. Again, the presentation is quick as Celine Ferrer comes through on the burst. I mentioned played most of her rugby in second row that she has been playing in the back row for Bayonne this season. Safi Indiai, another one who's been playing in the second row, having moved up from her more familiar number eight spot, but such is the amount of back row talent that France have at their disposal. Yeah, we're seeing a bit of a scrappy play by both sides here. I think they're both struggling to find their feet a little bit. I think Eleanor Snow still there with the chip over the top probably wasn't the best option in the Welsh half, giving the French the opportunity to come back and attack. And if there's one thing the French love is scrambled play. They will attack off that all day long. Well, France aiming for their fifth Grand Slam triumph. French! If they can hold Point. well get to victory I suppose in this game be their second since Italy had joined of course joined the current lineup of sides back 11 years ago but Wales with their own particular targets they know they've got to execute given opportunity they've 
got to hold on to their discipline in defence as well. Discipline, of course, cost them half an hour playing a man down last week. Kirib Evan is checking the uh, positioning. Robin Wilkins with the clearance. But again, those kickers have got to be careful not to kick the loose ball back to this potent back three. And that's why Cyril Bane manages to beat her own hooker, beats another one. The tackle's falling off, and that's why France are over. Pauline Bourdon scored against Italy. Now she scores against Wales, and France already on the board. Yeah, well, just as uh, we mentioned a moment ago, the, the French do like to counter-attack off scrambled play. I think uh, Robin Williams is going to be a, um, a bit good about that kick. You know, she's normally such a solid kicker. The kick didn't quite make touch, gave France the opportunity to counter-attack. And here we see the threat that is Benet and then that support run to offload on her shoulder. But the France were in with the try. She's such an elusive but strong runner. She's fighting off players left, right and centre and still has the awareness to look for her support. And then Bourdon is rewarded with that try. Yeah, I don't think Hannah Jones is going to want to watch that replay. Her tackling technique being exposed there as the French scrum half finished up, surfing in as she did. Yeah, there's one thing I spoke to Karis Phillips uh, earlier today and they said their main message in camp is to starve Successful France of the ball. The so they need to uh, pull themselves back together now and try and get into this game. Frank well, Bourdon, who started at five half, has other Celtic games that they've had against Ireland and Scotland. And now with the return of Caroline Drouin from the seven, she's moved inside and such is the nature of French halfbacks. Of course, that's an easy transition. Wales with the advantage from that knock forward, should they require it. Wilkins and Snowsill just swapping positions. Of course, Wilkins, a familiar fly half, Release. played the first game. That first game here, of course, against Scotland with uh, Snowsill and Brisbane on sevens duty. No advantage coming. We have a scrum for you. Scrum red. It was a knock on. Okay, thank you. A knock on from uh, a French mitt is going to give the put in to the home side. And this, in terms of confidence, is going to be critical that, that Wales set the stall out to, to be able to play from set piece. Yeah, absolutely. It's one thing that the Welsh team do pride themselves on is their pack and their set piece. But then equally, we've seen how strong and powerful the French pack are. So this is really going to be a battle of the heads. Wales holding their own there. That's a good start from the uh, home eight. The passing inaccurate though. It's hacked through by Boujard. Boujard's footballing skills coming to the fore. She can't pick the ball up, and that's good recovery. I think that was Beth Lewis getting back there. But my goodness me, she needed to be quick in response. Emma Jones walking into a French cul de sac. But the ball right there back. for Bevan. Snow Sill organising things, but Over. letting the slightly bigger boot perhaps of Robin Wilkins find that exit out of the 22. Yeah, that's a real shame. You know, the Welsh set a lovely platform there, a really solid scrum, and Snow Sill came round at fly half and attacked the line, which is great to see, but unfortunately then the pass didn't quite make it. It was a turn, well, kick through, and then we saw the winger then just couldn't quite regather it. That's great work rate by the... Uh, the flanker there, Beth Lewis. Agat Sosha, who replaced Garminio both for club and for country, plays for Montpellier in the top eight. Bane took that ball really well. I'm not quite sure whether it was actually the, the move that they were planning. As it happens, the ball has been released to Wales and now Wales trying to make something on this near side. Just Kevin Williams Friendly. unable to make any particular headway. Very much a home game, I think, for Jess Kavanagh Williams. Certainly her name was treated to the biggest roar when the teams were read out before the game. Lives in the middle of the Snowdonia National Park, so I guess that can 
qualify as home, can it? Yeah, absolutely. And it's so good for her to be able to uh, to play up here and for once not have to do the big four-hour trek down to Cardiff that uh, she does Crunch. so frequently. 300-mile round trip she does for training three times a week. Yeah. Commitment. That's it right there. Ten minutes gone. Just that solitary score for France from Bourdon. There's Carol Thomas. In Bristol loose head. Made her debut only 12 years ago against Ireland. Still going and playing better and better. It really is an impressive front row for the ladies in red. Phillips Evans alongside the loose head. Now they're under a bit of pressure though as Hermé controls picks, tries to drive through the Welsh scrum half. Bourdon releasing the next phalanx of forwards led by Duval. Drouin slicing through. She's got support outside her, but she doesn't need her. And both the halfbacks have scored for France inside the first quarter. Welsh defence has been ripped asunder by the numbers 9 and 10 from the opposition. Yeah, the French did really well to create that. Nice. And to be honest with you, uh, we scored their... Drian scored there through the uh, centre, but actually it was on wide as well. If you can see here, they've shortened the Welsh line quite significantly, causing those big gaps as the Welsh players are trying to spread across the field to cover all the players. But in doing that, have just left too much of a gap there. And Drian is such a threatening 10. She is going to find that gap and she's going to expose it. Well, to be honest, when Drian came back from sevens and uh, Yana River Allen had been the, the starting scrum half um, with Bourdon at fly up. You wondered what the mix was going to be, but there's, a, there's almost a mischievous Frank element between those two Pepper. because they have that zest, that will to do things that maybe you're not expecting. Uh, and it really has, has fired this French backline. Tremulio with a simple conversion to finish things off. knew that this was going to be perhaps the toughest task of their campaign. Release. They've seen the opposition slice Release through that it. red line twice already. Now they need to get some points on the board just to keep themselves in the game. Bit of crossing going on there, I think. Yeah, I think we've just found the uh, French there being a little bit too creative, running all sorts of lines, but unfortunately that did result in crossing. There is always that possibility I suppose that, that that France will try and almost overcomplicate matters such as their talent you know they can do it but that maybe that's something that if they do Wales have got to pounce given that opportunity yeah basically the Welsh girls can't give them the time to run around can't give them the, the option to run all these creative lines as we saw at the very beginning of the game with Shuan Lillycrack coming up and, and raising that line speed and really shut them down, that's what Wales need to try and do, try and stifle this incredibly creative back line that the French have. 13 minutes gone and I think this is Wales' first visit to the French 22. Certainly they have got to make the most of every opportunity that comes their way this evening. Line up works to Lewis. The forwards come round. I think that's Amy Evans taking control. Use it. Ceding possession to her skipper. Use it, use it. And those forwards just getting broken a bit, but Shanae Harris yeah. sorts things out. The big number eight sets the ball back for the next strike. Lewis rebuffed. Ball still there for Wales. Back, back. Crowd trying to make a difference to the home team. Wilkins, oh, late. Just edged it forward there. Just when it looked like Wales had built up a bit of momentum, the midfield unable to maintain that. Yeah, that's unfortunate. The forwards did really well, sucking in lots of the French players. And as you can see there, the Welsh back line actually had two players clear. Unfortunately, couldn't quite get the catch pass process. Try and offload in the tackle there, resulted in a forward pass. Great anticipation from Bujar, but maybe Wilkins and Lake have just got to have that communication yep. to make sure that Crunch. if it's a 50-50 pass, it doesn't go. Boy. 
Oh, and then they recycle and go again. Absolutely, and I think if the Welsh back line had a little bit more depth, there could have even been a call for a behind the ball pass, so actually missing Karen Lake completely. Draw, putting boot to ball. Banay is missing, but a great take from Kavanaugh Williams. Great work from the Welsh left winger, right? Will that raise the stakes a bit for Wales? Lewis sent back outside the 22 by our opposite number, but the ball's still there. Mel Clay sets the stall out just outside the 22. Butchers. And Wales have got to be patient and find the right moment to strike because this French defence is one of the most frugal in the whole of the Six Nations. Only allowed two tries in the previous four games and both of those of course were to England and Grenoble. Wilkins again not giving her centre partner much help there and the ball ultimately knocked on by Lewis but again a case in point 12 and 13 not really working off the same page. Yeah, you can see the intensity that the French uh, French backs are bringing to that. One thing about their defence is they've got players on their feet, they make dominant tackles, which means they can realign quicker, and they're almost in control of that defence then, rushing up, really putting pressure on the, the Welsh outside back there. I think, again, if we could have a little bit more depth on that Welsh back line attack, so at least you're giving the, the fly half some more options, potentially round the back, get around the back door, or even a little dink over the top. If the French are going to come flying that much, try and keep them a bit more honest and true, put it behind them. Let's release the wingers and see what they can do. Certainly can be a matter for those Welsh backs to, to play what they see and be able to adjust accordingly. As we've said that, blue line will be up in their faces all match. And that's one of the biggest step ups of international rugby. You can have players that can play off the playbook, that can play moves left, right and centre. But can you, when the pressure's on, when the heat of the moment on the line, make the right call? Draw up. Getting the call from Le Pesque. Tremoulier feeds on to Bougeat. Just look at the angles that the French are running in the eye. Unable to hold on the ball and attack through. I think that was Carol Thomas's boot that sent the French scattering back towards to round 22 for the advantage. Red. Not enough, according to referee Benvenuti. And again, that came from Shuan Lillicap leading the pace in the, in the uh, defensive line. She brings it up with such intensity there. Look, forcing that pass creates the knock on and that's when they can take the advantage from it. We just need all of the Welsh players now to be on the same page as Shuan Lillicrap. Lillicrap, of course, played at number eight last time she was here, the opening game, with uh, Shenanda Harris, another one of those that was on sevens duty out in Oz. Not sure whether Carol Thomas has ever played sevens, but has an Im important part of this Welsh team now. You know what? She did actually come to the trials. She's the type of player yeah. that I can imagine really enjoying it. <laughs> yeah. Because she always seems to have that smile on her face. It's great to see. Absolutely. And I scrummaged against her and it was a nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> Hannah Jones is certainly part of the seven setup. Oh, she invites her opposite number to send the ball back from the boot. Pass, just about passing muster. She can't the punt. Late. Out to Kavanaugh Williams. Just Kavanaugh Williams. Bevan gets the call from Lewis. Support coming off the shoulder of the scrum half now at good pace. Harris Phillips sets it back for a scrum half to go again. Look at that red back line just working out where it's going to work, where it's going to try and test out the French defenders. Bevan gets the call from Amy Evans. Hey, rock, no hands in there. Amy Evans, who scored a couple of tries against France last season. Wilkins just trying to tease a blue defender out of position. Doesn't manage it, but keeps the ball there for Wales. As they pick and drive, led by Carol Thomas. Good presentation. Beginning to stitch the phases together now. 
Now Searle takes them into the 22. Now this is where they've got to maintain their composure, find that execution, that thrust. To take them to the try line, Harry's. Full on commitment that time from uh, Miles. A change of options from Snowsill. Kavanaugh Williams gets a hand to it. Good reaction. I think that was Wilkins up there for the bat back, as it were. Butchers. Well, look into double figures on the phase count. Still struggling to get over that 22, though. Carol Thomas says, Follow me. Phillips sent back by Ferrer. Turn back, turn back. Wales knocking on the French door, but at the moment nobody is opening. And there's turnover there for Jad Lepesque. Looks like I think it Butchers is down. Is it not quite? Just looking to see as her teammates continue things moving now from halfway. Snowsill again looking for the advantage from the boot. Camulier with plenty of time. Almost running into a phone box there, but the offload is there for Bourdon. This is where France are so dangerous. Hannah Jones tries to catch the French fullback out of position. But such is her class, the 25 year old from Stade Rene. Able to respond. The rebound, though, doesn't work for France and they get the call on the breakdown. Well, it's haphazard, hectic. I'm not sure, I'm not sure which way this one's going to end. Yeah, that was a, a great set of phases by the Welsh squad. Really calm and composed, hitting it up, keeping the ball back. As we see here, Tremolet just trying to kick it through, and that was savvy by Beth Lewis there, just defending that, blocking that, and we get the uh, Wales get the turnover. It was the blind side who took a knock there, and they don't want to see the back of Alicia Butchers, that's for sure. There's a, an inspirational character in so many ways in that game against Italy, albeit she had to sit out 10 minutes with a yellow card, but you know she has got that dynamism to her play that can, uh, can breach the line. Doesn't look good from here. I know you forget as well that Alicia Butchers, she's only 20 years old. She plays with such a mature, composed head on her shoulders. It's as if she's been playing in the Six Nations for 10 years. She's such an asset to the team. This would be a real shame for, for the Welsh if the, if Alicia Butchers does have to go off here. Well, bar that 10 minutes last week, she's played all five hours of Six Nations rugby. Hasn't missed a beat. But it looks like that record is going to end right now as the stretcher is being brought out as we uh, see those two opening tries from the league leaders. It's pulling Bourdon, the Bayon scrum half, as she is today. With, uh, Duan, try on half-time against England and Grenoble, absolutely critical to the, the sway of that match, of course, which was uh, finished off late by the French fullback. Here's the contact. Just looking to see what. Yeah, it just caught the back of the calf there, I think. Inadvertently by Elise Aracast. Just, oh, was it the ankle? That hurts to watch. You know what? It, nine times out of ten, it's the tackles from behind. The ones that are in front of you, you, you almost brace yourself for, you prepare yourself for. But the ones from behind, they're the ones that can lead to that injury risk. Unfortunately, I think we've just seen Alicia Butchers potentially just go over her ankle there. And you take the tackle, therefore, on your own. Within your own remit, almost. You can control how it goes to a large, large intent. There's near Ellen Davis. Alicia Butchers. In the back row. The injury is not too severe. Please show your appreciation for Alicia. Because, of course, Alicia Butch is part of that Commonwealth 7 squad that was announced during the week. Let's hope it's nothing too uh, elongated in terms of uh, injury. 
Yeah, absolutely. But we see Nia Allen coming on. She came on in the uh, second half against Italy last week, and I thought she, she made a real good impact. She's uh, another option in the line-out, very dynamic player. She, in the past sort of five, six years, had a lot of sevens experience, um, played a lot there. So she's a very, very open back row player. She likes to be very creative with the ball. That's what we call a beauty shot. That's Colwyn Bay, and the French have absolutely loved it here. They came in on Wednesday, they were training on the beach. They even went swimming in the North Sea. <laughs> wow. The, the some that are the Basques and they're used to that on the Southwest, or Irish Sea, I beg pardon, mind you, it's just as cold. But then you look at it and they went, what, can you wear thermals in the sea? Can you wear thermals to swim? They've loved it, they've had a great time. I'm not sure that Roland Phillips is having such a great time through this first quarter. Shannon Harris and uh, Sean Lillicrat really trying to keep the Welsh confidence intact and that's what it is when you get to round five you've got to make sure your teammates keep believing yeah absolutely and you know, it, look at it in the, the first 10 minutes then actually it's the France have capitalized on a lot of the Welsh mistakes there it's not as if they were holding onto the ball for multiple phases they, they ground the Welsh defense down and then scored they actually scored off broken play, which was down to a lot of the Welsh errors. So I think they can take confidence in the last 10 minutes where we've seen them hold on the ball against the French team, which is no mean feat for 10, 15 phases. That will bring the confidence to try that cross field kick over to Jasmine Joyce. That's really promising to see. And just before that play stopped, they did have the ball in hand. So they'll take confidence from that. And you can see the tactics on the field. Wales are going for a course. You can see Harris trying to instill and maintain that belief. Good turnout here in North Wales. Of course, this is a double head up. Under 20s, the men's under 20s follows. Plenty of French support, hoping to be uh, celebrating the pubs and clubs of Colwyn Bay later on this evening. So, Anisha Butcher's being carried off. And She's uh, field, and show you that to show you a applause from the crowd. Let's hope that the, uh, the news from the physio's room is positive. So, a lengthy delay, always difficult for players, especially on a, a cold, wet night, such as it has been here in North Wales. They've just got to get themselves back going again into the second quarter of this game. Thank you. And the Snowsell, another one of the Wales 7 squad, there's the replacement. Came on for Beth Lewis before the hour mark last week. Now going to get a full hour on the park this week. That's a better constructed driving ball from Wales there. Holding their shape. Got to make sure they don't get too extended in order to keep the power in place. But they seem to be making a little bit of headway into the French 22. to reset the sat nav because they're heading out towards the Irish Sea there but they do so and they still have the ball and they're still making yards ball set back by Harris Evans make sure everybody's in position before she picks and drives that's the try line on the left of your picture Beth Lewis Shown well in these first 23 minutes, the Gloucester Hartbury flanker. Almost there for Wales. Safi Ndiaye is not going to uh, allow it to be an easy journey though. Snow Silk puts it out in the backs, but again the accuracy of the passing not helping the flow. Rescued by Jazz Joyce and her fellow winger, Jess Kavanagh Williams. Puts it back for Bevan and the Welsh forwards have to go again. Shannon Harris will not be stopped though. She has got a very impressive engine on her. Run away, Blue! 
Reese Phillips and Snowsilk combining better there. Hannah Jones just running out of room on this near flank, but a bit of momentum coming into the Welsh attack now. Yeah, great bit of momentum. They really shortened the French line there. Great to see the backs and the forwards into linking up wide there. Unfortunately, Hannah Jones just got shuffled out into touch, but much, much better play from the, uh, the Welsh there. Jones, another member of the Gloucester Hartbury set up, run by Susie Appleby in the West Country of England, of course. And in her first Six Nations campaign, the 21 year old, Safi Ndi has played in a few more than that. This is her 15th Six Nations game. And such a key cog, whether at number eight or the second row. It's a rock, don't put your hands in. Rock is Little discipline at the breakdown from Thomas, not helping her team. Quarter of an hour to go until the break. 14 points on the board for France. We saw it last week at the Principality Stadium that the Welsh had so much possession, but in the key areas in the 22 just unable to make it count and again that was case in point for the last well probably five maybe ten minutes where they've had the possession but you look at the scoreboard and there's still no points on the board yeah i think the welsh attack is much more direct which is great to see after the game against italy it was the one thing they were lacking was directness they kept running out of play now we've seen already that the welsh have managed to shorten the french line so that's because of a more direct attack but they still need to finish Jared Lepesque showing good strength had to miss the Italy game when she got injured playing for her club Stade Rene on the fallow week as it was having made such an impact in the opening rounds two tries against Ireland and a try against the Scots then returning for the England game in that midfield mix with Colin Eason good tackling from Harris Good power coming from the number eight. Davies. Devon just changing her mind. Run away, Blue. Having to sit down fairly abruptly, but the ball is still there for her team. Clay, another one who's... Uh, been ever present bar that yellow card last week through this Six Nations. That's the value to her team. There's a turnover ball there. The advantage being played for Wales. The Welsh girls just need to make sure that when they are taking that ball into contact that they're protecting it. A couple of times then it just bubbled out and players are having to rush quickly pick up that ball and drive it back in but then they're going in on their own and they're going to risk losing the ball just need to be a little more secure of it on the ground yep. presentation absolutely critical especially in this sort of weather these uh, gluey conditions underfoot got to make sure that everything is done to a T in order that you can build, in order that you can pick up the pace, get the momentum into the attacks. Miss Aracast, the Lawns loose head, settles down to her day job, so to speak. Gordon okay. is allowed to play from the side. Drouin, taken down by her opposite number. Yeah, mate. Get away right now. In the eye. Top blue. Tremoulier okay. with that big languid strike. Such long levers, of course, Tremoulier. And Jones is being hunted down on a 22. High tackle is the call from the officials. But Wales are going to have to go from deep now. 
Lewis. Rock! We come back at the high tackle. No advantage. So that was a great chase up there by uh, Bujar. The pace on her. In catching up with Jasmine Joyce is, is no mean feat and then uh, carrying on to chase down Hannah Jones. Unfortunately, leaving Hannah Jones with no option but to take the ball in when really I think Wales would have liked to have seen that ball kick clear and out into touch and get them out of trouble. Well, the call going against... Celine Ferrer, I think it was, coming across there. Yeah, and there's no real need for that. She had the pace on uh, on Hannah Jones. She could have just gone low there. It, it's, it's margins, isn't it? You see when she makes the contact, she's actually on the shoulder, and it slips up. It's difficult when you've got a height disparity like that, but as you rightly say, you've got to make sure your technique is absolutely on the spot in terms of... Uh, what you can do legally and illegally. Half an hour gone, and uh, those two early scores from France. Now you see Bourdon again. She's constantly on the supporting shoulder. Every phase of play, she passes, she follows, she passes, she follows. Fantastic work rate by the scrum half. Good take from Clay in the middle of the lineup, retaken by the captain Phillips. Leave it there. And the bat feeds on to her scrum half, Kira Bevan. Made her return from injury last week, having hurt that ankle in November. Three Six Nations games last season, and all of the Six Nations the year before just shows the importance of the scrum half to the Welsh national team. counter ruck coming in from France, but Davis able to move the ball away to Snowsill, trying to get away from the quagmire in the middle. Kevin Williams has to do some more hard yards forward from the hands of Ame picked up by the officials I don't think that would count as an intentional knock on but I don't know if they're going to go back and have a look at that or if she's happy that it was non-intentional yep just going for the advantage so here we see the French player number eight there just trying to get out to take that ball I don't know, I think there are many referees who have their uh, varying opinions on that, but today it's uh, unintentional and Wales just get the advantage. Such is the beauty of the game. <laughs> Everybody has their own opinions. And Snow is such an experienced operator, having played in three Rugby World Cups. The Bristol Fly Half made a debut for a country back in 2009 against Sweden. Been there, seen it, done it, got most of the t-shirts. Yeah, absolutely, Eleanor Snowsill, a world-class player in both sevens and fifteens, and she is one of the girls that is crossing over, literally going to sevens training, then fifteens, then sevens. I mean, physically and mentally, she's been, you know, had a lot thrown at her. She's taken it in her stride, and more importantly, she's enjoying her rugby, which is great to see. One of the Commonwealth squad that was announced this week, of which you're captain, I bowed off my hat. <laughs> Thank you very much. But they, they Straight after this, what is then is their timeline to go into, into Seven's operation, as it were? Yeah, you know what? There's uh, very little breathing space. As of Monday, we are in together as Sevens, and it will include the girls that are playing here today. Wow. <laughs> and then it's a fairly full calendar, isn't it? Because you've got the, uh, the qualifiers in Hong Kong for the World Series. Absolutely. And then the Commonwealth Games in Australia, virtually straight after. Yeah, very, very exciting month ahead for uh, Welsh Women Sevens. Well, in case I forget to text you, good luck. <laughs> Thank you. John Lefesque going nowhere fast and brought down by Amy Evans. Play. The call is there for Wales. Now, can they make some something of this unexpected possession? Wilkins and Lake. Oh, that was 
Was that an intentional knock on? No, says the referee. Coming back for the earlier call. We have a holding on. Six minutes to go to half time. This would be a very psychologically a very important time for the home side to get on the scoreboard yeah absolutely you know i'd love to see what the stats are for possession because i dare say it's going to be swinging in wales's favor but obviously it doesn't matter about the stats what matters is the score on the board so wales really need to capitalize now on this possession that they are having so karis phillips deciding the value of points is going to be critical and asking Robin Wil Wilkins to have a pot at the posts. Thank you. Ever present Wilkins since making her debut four years ago. 34th cat now for the 22 year old. It's so good for the future of, uh, of Welsh women's rugby to have that many caps at such a young age it's just fantastic for the next you know four years the next world cup things like that brilliant to have such an experienced head at such a young age that is a very very good kick from robin wilkins a very important five minutes robin before half time they break their bagel they're on the scoreboard and the crowd Realising it, and acknowledging it from the stands. Wales three, France fourteen. Who are you cheering for? Plenty wearing red. Plenty wearing the tricolour in the stands. It's been sparked really by that Welsh score. Big four minutes until the break, psychologically. Down there. Oh, lovely run. Looking for support, can't find it. Boudon, Drouin, and the eye. And the eye showing good strength. This is where Wales have really got it face up and get the tackles in that is a fantastic turnover i think it was just kavanaugh williams that was absolutely great flexibility and strength shown by jess kavanaugh williams left wingers aren't supposed to do that are they for a winner <laughs> no i know that was a supreme turnover from the left winger let a look at this Yeah, great strength, great flex flexibility, staying on her feet, managing to reach over the player and getting her hands on the ball. And a very important turnover. But look at this pace and agility from the number eight. You know, a strong player, but a powerful and such an elusive runner. That's, that's what the, the French squad are. That just encompasses the French team. Great work from Kavanaugh Williams, but the Welsh forwards have now got to hold their own in the set. To get themselves away from danger. Shannon Harris winds it up. Getting a little bit isolated there. Gonna to have to make sure they're methodical in their exit. See France only committing one, maybe two to the breakdown. And then the loose kicks allows Banay to rev it up. Kavanaugh Williams coming up quickly to get her opposite number. So five minutes from the left winger, but her team still on the defensive, albeit that they've moved their visitors away from the 22. Yeah, you start to get the feeling here, the momentum is just switching over to France now. That's why these last two minutes are going to be so important for this match barometer. Bourdon, Durant throws it in to Tremoulier. Wrapped up by Lily Crap. She's had an outstanding first half. Oh, the breaks there from Carla Neeson. Neeson taken by Jazz Joyce. Wales alarm bells ringing once again. France with huge numbers out to the left. Myons. Wales setting out their defensive line. The attack 
momentum, the impetus in the Release French red. group is be beginning to build and we're in the final minute of this first half. Wales desperate to hold out, France get desperate to get their third try on the board. Drouin weighing up the option, Snowsill mixing it with Lewis to make sure she's getting no further, but the ball still there, Lopez out to Tremoulier and Jessie Tremoulier gets her fifth try of the campaign. And that could be a critical score just before half-time. Yeah, absolutely. That was well worked by the French team. It's getting a bit frustrating now for the Welsh girls. You've got one moment, you've got Shu and Lily Crap bringing great intensity from the defensive line, and then you've just got two prop forwards. Unfortunately, a bit of a mix, mismatch against the 12 there, who took her chances, went for the gap. They recycled, calm, composed, released the player. And we did even have the French did even have an extra player outside Tremolet if she wanted to give that ball. But that's where the the execution, the attack, the made sure that they come away with points. And from Wales up the other end, yeah. who weren't able to find that cutting edge. That is why France are on top of the log at the moment. Yeah, again, you know, talk about stats. If you look at the stats of the Welsh in their half, what they came away with, three points. You look at the time now the French have been in the Welsh half, what they come away with, a try and potentially a conversion. And that at the moment is the difference between these teams. Ladies and gentlemen, please respect the kicker. Moulier draws it round, but it hits the bar, and the, and the two points are not added, but that is a big strike from the visitors right on half-time. Those two tries in five minutes from the half-back board on Drouin put them into the ascendancy. Wilkins getting Wales back eventually five minutes before the break, but that try from the French fullback putting the league leaders in the ascendancy. Half-time, France leading 19 points to three to Hannah Wright. Happy birthday, Hannah. Now, I'm coming. Now, as well as a great weekend of rugby with Wales and France senior men playing at the Principality Stadium tomorrow, let's take a look at some of the great events Perth in Wales this summer.
follow. Welcome back to the Zipwell Stadium here in Colwyn Bay as the two teams step out and for the final 40 minutes of this year's Six Nations campaign. Now, Wales three, France, France 19, hoping for so team, much with the Grand girls, Slam in gentlemen. prospect. Getting two early tries in that first half from Bordeaux and Drouin before Wales really worked themselves back into position and were able to take points off the tee. But Tremoulier's try with the last play of that first half, absolutely critical to the psyche of the match. And it'll be fascinating in the first five, ten minutes of this second half to see how that affects both teams. I'm Simon Ward. Alongside me, I'm delighted to have Philippa Tachit, the Welsh Sevens captain. Philippa, psychologically, there were some big pluses for Wales to take from that, albeit a lot of that uh, first half they were in defensive mode. How important, though, could that three points be in terms of the way that they're now going to try and build in their second half? Absolutely. They've definitely taken some confidence from their ability to style France of the ball. You know, securing long, long phase play and keeping it away from those French forwards is no mean feat. However, as ball retention means nothing unless they're clinical in it. They got those three points that time, but they need to go for the tries. Seanad Harris again leading from the front. Alicia Butchers carried off in that first half. Her back row colleague. Snowsill stepping up to keep play moving. Drouin taking her target down. But Bevan steps up and Wales again step forward with Amy Evans. Snowsill off a weaker left foot. But it's manna from heaven for the likes of Jesse Tremoulier. Because this French back three, well, there's a basketball pass that didn't quite work there. Did that go forward? I'd like to give her the benefit of the doubt and say it's very windy here, but it's, it's not a <laughs> stitch of wind, so that was just one she's not going to want to watch let's back. Put, let's put it down to a muddy ball, shall we? <laughs> yeah. As it is, it's Wales who can't make the most of the muddy ball with Amy Evans just uh, unable to pick up that dipping bomb. But this French team, you have to raise and doff your cap to the French coaches. Samuel Chirouk and Olivier Lievremont only took over the beginning of last year. They took the French team then to the World Cup. They got the bronze medal. And now it looks, at the moment, like they're heading for a Grand Slam in the Six Nations. And it has been a rejuvenation, really, of Les Bleus. Yeah, absolutely. I think the um, the effects the coach has had is obviously present. And you know, you've got the likes of, say, Banet, who's new in this Six Nations and has slotted in and is being able to play at such a high level and a high intensity. I think that's credit to the coaching staff. They've got a, a well-gelled team here with strengths scattered throughout. So in regards to their de development plan for the World Cup, looking ahead, they're in a very strong position already. Well, the well scrum enjoying that little success. Well, that's the type of set piece that Roland Phillips will have been asking his team. And Paul Young, the forwards coach, will be delighted with what he's seen there, no doubt. Absolutely, the Welsh pack really out-muscling the French pack. Fantastic effort by the Welsh forwards. Phillips hits a target and Harris comes round on the front peel. Second phalanx of forwards is there and ready to go, led by Lillicrap. Had a storming first half, Shuan Lillicrap. 
Amy Evans, powerful tight head, of course, the former Welsh weightlifting international. Lewis. Welsh pack seem to be up in the ante a bit. Now they're in the French 22. They've got to keep that momentum, though. Wilkins throws it right into Karen Lake's bread basket. Does well to keep it and get them over the game line. But then the passing lets them down and the moment is gone. Yeah, that was a good bit of face play by the uh, the Welsh forwards and backs interlinking there. They do just need to be careful. On a couple of occasions, the Wales sent one up runners, and you even had little Kira Bevan, um, as, as mighty as she might think she is, she's not really the person that Wales want straight in trying to protect that ball. You need to make sure that the forwards are not running on their own. They want to keep the backs out so they can play and capitalise on the forward momentum. Good contesting from Mel Clay, but ball back for Bourdon does well to pick up the scraps and it's Drew on who clears. Kavanaugh Williams just losing that ball, I think, in the lights as it came over her shoulder. So looks like there's going to be changes in the French lineup. It's going to be Lisa Aracast and I think Cyril Banet. He's going to make way for, yeah, there's Banet. She'll be replaced by Marine Menager, wearing 23 there. And then Caroline Thomas, wearing 17, replacing her loose head colleague. Such strength in depth. We talked about the strength of the French bench. You're going to really see it in these final minutes of this second half. Plenty, <laughs> There's plenty to play with, of course. Yeah, absolutely. The French uh, bench is a very, very strong bench. I can imagine uh, if any coach has got a headache about who to select, it's the French. Well, Sean and Harris won't want to be substituted again. Such dynamic running from the number eight. Can her team make something of that momentum? Snowsill brought to ground. Just short of the French 10 metre line. Wales looking to build up ahead of steam again. Again, Harris, how many breaks, how many busts has you made already? So important for this team. Wilkins trying to find a way through, but losing the ball in contact, not looking after the ball, is just going to allow France to get their attacking engine going again. This time, Hermé is wrapped up by Lillicrat. Well, the referee telling Thomas that she's got to let go. I'm not quite sure why. There are knees down there. Didn't quite see that one. Come straight out anyway, so it's going to come back for a Welsh line-out. Jesse Tremoulier, one of the stars of this Six Nations. 59 points makes her the top point scorer in this tournament. Yeah, so here we just see Robin Williams there taking a kind of a bit of a, uh, a half-hearted choice at that hit up. You know, if you're going to take it into contact, you've got to square your hips up. You've got to drive forward and be in control of that collision. She just got caught on the side. The unfortunately, the ball was knocked off. Thanks, so interesting change here in the Welsh midfield. That's not Jess Kavanagh Williams. That's Robin Wilkins being replaced by Alex Donovan. So how does that change the mix in that attacking line for the home side? Well, I think the uh, Welsh coaches might be looking here at a bit more of an attacking back line. Alex Donovan and Karen Lake, very similar. They love going for that outside shoulder. And more changes in the front row. Brings uh, Patricia Karakabaru in to replace Julie Duval. Of course, you can never wave goodbye to props when they head off the, to the subs bench. There's always a chance that they may be making a return at some point. Right now, though, those props are in defensive mode as Harris Phillips tries to steer that driving ball. Better formation this time, a little more power as they looked at the short side. Oh, Kira Bevan trying to get the ball back to her captain. Nice idea, just didn't quite come off. Yeah, that's an unfortunate mistake there. They had a strong, strong, strong scrum, should I say? Going Easy forward. for you to uh, say. 
<laughs> Hold your packet of wine gums before the match is never a good idea. <laughs> and I think the uh, the backs were looking to, to use that, just that shot there you couldn't quite see, but Jess Cavanaugh Williams was lined up right on the sideline, right on the touchline uh, nearest to us. So I think Snow Hill had a plan of a, of a cross field kick there. So I think she might have been a bit frustrated that uh, Karis Phillips and Kira Bevan went round there on their own. Wales showing brightly since half time, but still no points on the board as the tap is turned on upstairs. And you can see the rain beginning once again. The players being doused, but the players won't allow that to dampen their attitude, their ambition. Boudon has the ball delivered back to her. Into midfield. There's the break from Carlin Eason. Great drive from the seven star. Good reactions from Kira Bevan. Just picking up the ricochet, but the ultimately being isolated. Yeah, unfortunately, great reaction by Kira Bevan, but the rest of the back line didn't quite react as quick to be able to get with her and support her. So, unfortunately, Kira Bevan got caught on her own on the floor, holding on, and it's a turn over to the French. Well, before the match, we were watching the French warm up and they were working so hard on high intensity, quick pop balls, quick access and quick activity really around the ball. But really, we haven't seen that since the first 10, 15 minutes maybe. We haven't really seen them in this sort of position to make that count. It'll be interesting to see how they try and work it now from the driving ball, the forwards trying to find their way. But it's lost, and that one goes to Wales. That is a fantastic effort by the Welsh forwards. They really are stifling uh, the French. French are struggling to get, get going. They are living off the, uh, the Welsh mistakes at the moment. Well, I mentioned earlier about the expectation that these French girls have. And you have to look back at history and realise there's been plenty of occasions where they've gone looking as favourites and not come away with success. You can go back to 2008 against Wales. That match was uh, in Taft's Wells in Cardiff. A 3-0 extravaganza. Thankfully, we haven't had that one again today, but Ireland for the first time in 2009, Scotland a year later, Italy a couple of times, and of course, the last time they were in Wales at the Knoll in Neath, they had to take defeat 10-8. So you just wonder whether, you know, in the last half an hour of this game, if Wales can hold them out and if Wales can get some more points on the board, whether psychologically there could be a swing means the next score could be very important. Yeah, absolutely. I think there's a definite belief within the squad uh, that they can turn this game around. You can see when they do get the ball in hand, they are looking to try things. They're not just playing basic, safe rugby. They are actually trying things, but they need to capitalise on this ball retention. They need to be just that bit more clinical in attack. I got Sasha, the only forward that scored tries for France this season scored against Scotland and Italy but the, all the other 22 tries or 20 tries have been scored by backs that's indicative of the way that France like to play their game and there's another opportunity for Caroline Bougeard again the footballing skills was she taken out there off the ball I think the officials are going to have to confer here let's listen Timo, yep. please, would you check a potential tackle on the number 14? On a player blue, who's the one to try to score the try before? OK. Graham Hughes is the television match official in the truck. Here we go. The uh, first one, I have to look and see here. Yeah. It was Jazz Joyce taking the player off the ball. 
just for that split second there, she does make contact with a player who doesn't have a ball in their hands, and that is an infringement. You just see here now, I think she was preempting that Bujar was going to try and pick up that ball and try and make a, a man and ball tackle, but unfortunately, Bujar did kick it through. Then the next question is, did it stop a try being scored? Yeah, and that is the important one because if it has stopped a try being scored, then I think Jasmine Joyce is going to be sent to the bin. Okay. So the officials just waiting to see that shot again. Cool, thank you. Jazz Joyce certainly seemed to make contact okay, B. Yeah. with the uh, French winger. 14. There was cover yeah. coming across. But whether line. it would have been yeah. there in time. By red 14. Yeah. Here's okay, the call. Which means that basically she can't get through to get towards the try. Okay. So number 14, yeah. preventing yeah. the blue player to cut the ball and score the try. In my opinion. So penalty try is coming. Penalty try. Yeah. And yeah. And a yellow and, card. Um, and I'm going to communicate to the captain for red 14 and a yellow card. Yeah. Okay. okay. I'm afraid that's Thank inevitable. You. That is the uh, the tough rules of rugby, unfortunately. If you prevent an imminent try, then the try Jazz has to be Joyce. awarded. Number 14. Well, Jazz Joyce is going to be watching from the sidelines for the next 10. I'm afraid that was always on the cards. As soon as those replay pictures came up, understandable from the seven star what she was trying to do because she was almost behind the winger and therefore couldn't see whether she had the ball in her hands but a seven pointer for france and surely that swings the game and the championship now fully into their grasp best part of half an hour left on the match clock Wales having to cope once again with a player down. Had to do that three times during the match last week as Tremoulier slams the ball away. The rain continuing to pick up in its intensity. Hannah Jones looking for advance but only finding the French scrum half. Kavanaugh Williams doing well to scoop back and pick up the loose pieces. Bevan and Snowsill trying to work the position, but the ricochet really doesn't work. Neeson with the quick reactions to take that ball. Yeah, that's where the benefit of the French intensity in their defensive line comes into play. It really does shut down the options, leave it, leave it and it just brought the French player onto Eleanor Snowsill there, so she had no time to kick. And unfortunately, then there was a deflection by the French player and a turnover. And this is where Wales are going to have to work overtime now because France will know that they've already got the bonus point. And now they're going to open things up with Audrey Fulani. Tired Welsh legs getting back into position. Lewis is penalised. Bourdon is not going to wait. Her captain adding a little bit of extra muscle. There's the ball, there's the line. Karaka Baru leaves it for a scrum half. Well, Wales get away with that one. But they've got to keep their concentration now. They've got to keep their tackles coming in. Or this French team are just going to open up and take this game completely away from them. Yeah, there's just a little bit of inconsistency in the Welsh defence. You know, we're seeing some players shooting up and making really dominant hits and others just standing off and you just can't stand off a French player. Now, that was actually backs there. That was Eleanor Snowsill like, against a forward. Now, just because it's a forward does not mean that you can stand off them. Even more so, you've got to go and meet them. Crouch! Harris has to go the long way. It scrabbles another half meter or so for her scrum half. The Welsh pack roll up their metaphorical sleeves to do the hard yards. 
And Snowsill finds the exit. Changes for France. I think uh, Yana Riverlin is going to come on for Pauline Bourdon. France, number 10, Caroline. And it looks like Roman Manager is on for Audrey Fellani. So that will allow, presumably, Celine Ferrer to move back into the engine room. Roman Manager wearing 20, one of the the breakout stars in many ways of Rugby World Cup 2017 in Ireland. And she is got in the dream team, along with several of the French players, some of who, of course, aren't playing at the moment. And LDA, the prop, Lene Corson on the second row. Both of those injured at the moment. Yeah, manager had a fantastic World Cup, and I think she's uh, she's been a little quiet this this Six Nations, so she's definitely going to want to come on and prove her worth. So look out for her. Yep, she was benched for the Italy game in, in Corsica that I was present at. And being benched again for this one, I think a psychological boost from Annika Hero, the manager, just trying to spark her young back row into life again. The cross kick from Bourdon. Perfect kick, and there's the, the other manager, Marine manager, took a knock there as she took the ball. But the ball is still there for France. Neeson can find no way through there. And Marine Manager, oh, look, that's uh, an awkward head knock for the other Manager twin. Eyes fully on the ball as she went for it, and the head collision inadvertent. Yeah, what a kick here. Fantastic, absolute pinpoint accuracy to the winger coming on. And in fairness, great fielding then by the Welsh fullback. Constantly eyes on the ball makes the adjust, can't get to the ball, going to make the tackle. Unfortunately, there was a bit of a head collision between the two players there. So I think uh, there may be a HIA assessment in order. Either HIA or blood. Han Hannah Jones is also going to come off to have a check. There she is. Full commitment from both players there. Marine Menager came off the bench to such impact out in that match in Corsica, scored a couple of tries against the Italians. Yeah, it's no shock to see that the French fly half wanted to get her hands on the ball out on the wing there as soon as possible. But that really was a, a great kick and a, and a good bit of pressure from the Welsh backs. Yeah, so Pauline Bourdon still on the park, but now playing the fly half. It was Caroline Draw who was actually replaced by River Allen. Of course, that won't do anything to upset the French attack. There is uh, Camille Boudot. On to replace Marine Manager, certainly for the moment, as she has attention. Lisa Newman, there she is, where's 22? Lisa Newman, replacing number 15, Hannah Jones. On for the Welsh fullback. Maybe permanently, maybe temporarily. Hopefully, it's uh, nothing too severe for uh, Hannah Jones. 22 for France is Camille Boudard. It's uh, officially an HIA check, according to the officials. Replacing So Bujart invites her team to set up. There's Roland Phillips studying his laptop just along from us at the back of the stands. He knows his team now are under the cosh as France have taken the handbrake off. Take from Miles, the Olympian, so proficient in both sevens and fifteens. The French forwards find forward gear and Wales having to work overtime to just rebuff there's River Allen and she's over. Well there was a certain sense of inevitability to that.
France really opening things up. In fact, that's not River Allen, that's Agat Socha. Yeah, Socha has been um, a real find in this tournament. She's the, the new up and coming hooker, taking over, of course, the, uh, the French legendary hooker. There's Captain there. Finds her way to the back, gets that ball away. Powerful, dynamic drive straight over. She's going one way, and that is straight towards the try line. Her third try of the campaign. Nice. Frank. And uh, profiting from the hard yards of her front colleagues there from that line out driving ball. Yeah, credit to the Welsh uh, forwards there. They were managing that. They certainly got the, uh, the hit on. They had the momentum in that. But clever play by the French, feeling that momentum, feeling it was going back. They teared off and they went down another avenue. That the 24th try for France in this campaign. And when you compare to recent years, you realise how they've moved things on. Finished third last year, managed 21. And 2016, of course, when they won a points difference over England, they only managed 16. So it really is a testament to the attacking game that France have been able to build in the last 12, 18 months or so. 33. Wales, don't forget, still with the player down, Jazz Joyce, watching as France beginning to build up ahead of steam now. Manager sets it back for Rivalin. Little inside pop from Tremoulier. Ah, again, we just had a. Uh a moment of obstruction, the French being slightly too creative for their own good. Lots of lines and angles being run there. It's like a geometry lesson, isn't it, when this French attack really get going? Because the angles are just so obtuse, some of them, and just the way that they work and look inside. Yeah, it's every player has got a fantastic work rate. Even when they're not directly involved, they still want to try and make themselves involved. So they're constantly tracking that ball, offering those inside lines, outside lines, switch back in. But unfortunately, that inside line did just block, and that was crossing. Once again, Shannon Harris leading the way for Wales. Really crap, another forward who's really shown what she's about. Oh, that's unfortunate. There was two good carries there, obviously all started by Seanad Harries. And then just on that last carry, felt the forwards didn't quite come round at depth. They came across very lateral, which meant that Kira Bevan was almost passing such a flat pass that it just hit, I think it was Amy Evans on the shoulder there. The forwards, it's hard, hard work, but you've got to work around that ruck and come on to the ball. James Joyce warming up to get back in the fray as the hour mark ticks over. Changes for Wales now with uh, Gwenthi and Pers, a very popular local character, and Natalia John into the Welsh eight. The smile still on the face of Carol Thomas, and that's why you love to see people like her getting the acclaim they deserve on her 50th cap. A special day for the loose head. Yes, it may not result in victory, of course, but she still enjoyed that hour that she's put on the park for her country. And she's just done a great shift as well. You know, last week for me was absolute testament. She played the entire game against Italy and she was all over the park. She was in rucks on the wing. She was up front. She was, you know, the pivotal in the malls. She was literally everywhere. So, yeah, take a bow. Carl Thomas, fantastic player for Wales. The pick up from Emma as they look to the short side with Tremoulier. Pujat keeping things moving, asking her captain to reset the focus for the attacks. Shannon Harris doing her best to stall it. 
Bujar with great width on the pass. Jad Lepesk. Unable to make too much headway, but no panic. Bujar getting the kick through, the charge coming through on the French fly half as uh, I think given Wales the possession. Yeah, that was good line speed then by the uh, the Welsh back line, really coming up and uh, right into the French face. Even though the French has tried to do two out the back passes, so trying to get that ball wide, the Welsh were unfazed and kept pushing and kept putting that pressure on, which resulted in them stifling that kick and now regaining possession. Clay can't bring it in, and it's quickly picked up by Karakaburu. Patricia Karakaburu on a trundle into the opposition 22. Important work coming through there. I think that was Kerin Lake, wasn't it? it got up quickly in the face of Bougeart. A border, I beg your pardon, the French fly half almost being blindsided there by the Wales outside centre. And the eye. Pick and drive from Menager. Snow sill. Credit to Wales, they're keeping up their line speed, but the way that France are able to build on their attacks, so it's a turnover. Wales needed that. Quentin and Purse and Natalia John allowing their teammates to work away and up towards halfway. Snow Sill and the eye just grabs her target. That was great intensity by the uh, the Welsh girls there. All stemmed from that intensity in the defensive line. Shooting up, I think Seanad Harris was uh, was at the very point of that, allowing them to make that dominant tackle, which gives you a much better chance of stealing that ball. If you're in control of that defensive tackle, you've got a much better chance of getting in on the ball, turning it over as they did, playing away. It's a good bit of um, positioning now for the Welsh girls to try and attack from. France just warming up some more changes on the sidelines. Such is the strength of their squad, and there's plenty, of course, missing. Shannon Izar, Camille Grassino, Chloe Pell, Montserrat Amade, all on sevens duty. Elodie Poublins, we're told, is, well, if not retired, resting for the moment. So Hannah Jones has uh, failed her HIA, we're told, so she won't be returning to this particular mix with the quarter of an hour left on the clock great turnover from Roman Manager. oh but Wales have kept it they've done really well there Sean and Harris miracle worker not quite sure what happened there but Sean and Harris came out with the ball not sure whether it was sleight of hand but it certainly worked for Wales there now can they make this work yeah Wales have got numbers there on that left hand side it's whether they can expose it I mean, quick ball and it's allowed France to get back into position. Kira Bevan just taking that extra half second that's allowing the blue defenders to realign. Release eight, rock! Stay. One step back. It's Marine Manager back on the park as well for France. So we're on the far side there with the headband. Snow silt. Out to Amy Evans. No thought of a sidestep from the big tight head, but she's kept the ball. And again, Wales beginning to put those phases together. Little by little, making a bit of headway. Alex Donovan. Beth Lewis stepping in quickly. Snowsill looking for action around the fringe. Ball's gone backwards, says referee Benvenuti, so Wales continue. Seanan Harris has had a storming game once again. She never seems to let her country down, the number eight. Yeah, she's a fantastic player. I mean, she, I think she's had her hands on the ball more than the scrum half has in this game. 
Well, it is the scrum half now trying to get things going again, but just as that happens, it's released and it's Marine Manager who revs the engine up. Great work from Kavanaugh Williams getting back to snare her target, but France still on the front foot. What a reaction by the French there. Half a gap and they're going for it. Riverlin whisking it out to this near side, Carla Neeson. Neeson trying to pull the defenders out of shape before releasing Bouchard, gets it back into the outside center. And Carla Neeson gets her first try of this campaign. Well, there is a case of when opportunity knocks, you have to take it. And France really have that killer instinct in spades right now. Yeah, absolutely. And I think the difference at the moment between the Welsh and the French is that it doesn't matter who's in what position with the French, they'll go for it. The Welsh back line did come up really fast there with Karen Lake, but unfortunately the rest of the girls were just at a dog's leg, allowing the French to get that ball away, get it down the hands, and then Neeson capitalises on that great supporting line inside running, gets the ball back off the winger. Rewarded for the supporting line. Well, the Blagnac centre is doing so well to make sure the move kept going, and then, as you say, supporting the ball. 19 for Young Lecant, 22. Yeah, that was great work by the French. When you see that ball going to ground, when you see Karen Lake shooting up and making that defensive hit, really, as soon as that ball goes to ground, that falls pass away, Wales should have been on that. They should never have been allowed to, uh, to get that ball away. But credit to the French. The ball went to the ground, they picked it up, they composed themselves, they carried on with their attack. Jesse Tremoulier, who... Uh, scored 13 points last week there. against England 22 points against Italy a real points machine for Le Bleu Who decides that she doesn't want that one Sorry? she's actually hit the post on quite a few occasions it's very difficult Wales to do, but she's managing to do it. Jade Knight. Thank you. So the first match of this final round of the Women's Six Nations has finished in Coventry. England victorious against Ireland at the Rico, 33 points to 11. But it's going to be inconsequential in terms of their defence of their Six Nations trophy because France once again have produced an outstanding performance this time on the road Only called on keeping those tries are coming the England fullback taking the player of the match award Jade Knight the replacement scrum half in to keep things moving for the Welsh plays her rugby out of London at at Richmond because she's uh, training to be a midwife at King's College London and uh, I'm told that Nolly Waterman at the Rico became England's top try scorer one that you will have played against Philippa many yeah. a times I'm just not quite sure how she keeps going but yeah. the smile we talk about Carol Thomas, the smile is never off Nolly Waterman's face. I know, yeah, I've had the uh, fortune of playing alongside her as well. We both went to Uick University, where we both played in the, the Bucks final and, and many other fixtures uh, alongside that. Fantastic athlete, great role model, uh, real example to uh, the next generation of uh, rugby players. The final 10 minutes of this Six Nations for both France and Wales. Wales determined to try and get some more points on the board before they finish. Pers, the 20-year-old prop, unused in that Italy match. Indeed, all the front row replacements were unused. It's a rarity in itself. Now just been given the final 10 minutes of this match by Roland Phillips, as is uh, Kelsey Jones there wearing 16. Romain Menager penalised. Oh, I'm not sure whether near Ellen Davis actually knew where she was going there. I think she 
Just lost her bearings a little bit. Yeah, I can appreciate she wants to go for the quick tap, you know, capitalise on their momentum, but you've got to make sure that everyone else is on board with that as well. And Amy Evans unable to hold on to a very slippery ball. I think the rain has just eased off a bit, but still, it is very difficult to handle. Yeah, that's unfortunate there, because Amy has been a fantastic ball carrier, you know, not in just this game, in the Six Nations. So I think that's more down to a, a little bit of tired bodies and tired minds. Well, here we are in Colwyn Bay, the place that produced a James Bond in Timothy Dalton, an England cricket captain in Tony Lewis, and the Welsh women's captain in Rachel Taylor and we must mention a very special weekend for your mate Rachel Taylor. Yeah absolutely so she has the honour of captaining the Barbarians this weekend which is going to be a really exciting fixture so Barbarians against the Armed Forces. We've got a few uh, Welsh legends involved in that team as well as English and Irish of course. Yeah, Catherine Edwards I think is uh, dusted off the boots. Edwards who actually scored a try in that game at the Knoll two years ago when France suffered that defeat it's not going to happen this time around a half dozen tries in their locker never been behind in this game Crouch. Bind. River Allen, the PE teacher from Lille feeds the French scrum. Good power this time coming on from the Welsh eight. Secured though by Fiona Lacat, the under 20 captain from last year, off the bench to try and show what she's about in the senior team. Started in that game against Italy. Tremoulier. An awkward kick, to say the least. Jazz Joyce picks up the scraps with a little bit of help from Lisa Newman. Make sure that the ball is there for Wales to mount another attack. Lewis, another who's had an impressive match, albeit in a losing cause. Pess plays a rugby locally for RGC. Amy Evans plays a rugby a bit further south for the Ospreys. Two props quite happy to keep ball in hand. Shunard Harris once again setting the focus for her forwards. Caroline Thomas affecting the turnover for France though. And France will go from deep here. Boudot, the Toulouse centre, sets it back. No sense of trying to kick the ball away, such is their confidence now. They're happy to jouer jouer from wherever. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the French are always confident to, to attack from wherever, but I think especially in this game now. Oh, Just as that. I say, that Bordeaux's <laughs> kick is partially charged down. Boujard trying to make some headway good commitment from Lisa Newman there yeah it seemed like a bit of a, a mixed message there half the French wanted to play and then one or two just wanted to kick and get rid of the ball Pauline Bourdon wants to play look at this Bourdon inside to Bougeart just running out of space at a critical moment last five minutes as Keris Hale the Welsh replacement prop makes her re-entrance into the international fray. You've got to commend both teams' work rate right in this game. I mean, the ambition of the Welsh, it's still very much there. 75 minutes in, they are still knocking on that door. They are still striving for that try. And they're equally the French. They're 38 up, but they're still not happy. They still want to go for it. They're, you know, supporting those inside lines. They are looking to use their flair and attack. They want more and more tries. It's great for the game. And important to note that, of course, Wales won't know their final place in the table till Sunday afternoon. That game in Padova pits 
Italy against Scotland and it could well be points difference that decides who's the basement team. Obviously that points difference not helped by minus 35 that Wales are currently looking at but who knows what's going to happen. Certainly Italy and Scotland both seem quite buoyant at the moment with those somewhat unexpected wins last weekend. Scotland holding on to beat their Irish host and Italy taking the Welsh to task at the Principality. So who knows? Never say never. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's going to be a great game on Sunday and I, I really could, you know, I'm going to struggle to predict who's going to come off as the, the better team on that day. Trimoulier, little inside pop to Marine Manager. Not sure how they worked it, but they got to put into the line out. So clever handling. Alex Donovan committing to forcing the attackers out. You we'll see this now. Awareness of the inside support <laughs> behind the back. Not even looking. But that's probably because that support player is chatting and chatting and chatting and saying where she is, what type of pass she wants, so she doesn't even have to look. Tremolet can just pop that ball behind her back. Into the final moments, then the final three minutes of their Six Nations campaign. The pass just edging forward from uh, Safi Ndiaye. Well, the player of the match has been decided by the host broadcasters. I'll keep you on tender hooks for just a moment longer. It's her, Pauline Bourdon, the scrum half, fly half, nominated as the Six Nations player of the match. The fulcrum of so many of the French attacks and the lady who seems to run the team, whether it's at nine or ten, deserve an award. Yeah, absolutely. Not only has she been creating the attacks, but then when she's let them loose, she's following, she's supporting, she's constantly working. She is a buzzball of energy as well. I mean, she has all the talent, all the skill set, but her enthusiasm and the way that she keeps France working yeah, she's a real driver, especially behind that forward pack. Again, the Welsh kicking game. Just a little inaccurate and allowing France the chance to mount an attack, unfortunately for them. The handling not quite up to it on this occasion. Good power play from the pack, but again, Seanad Harris able to rescue operations for the Welsh. Bouchard trying to set the target for those French forwards to have one last play. Safi Indiai. Tremoulier breaks the tackle. Suddenly, the French attack picks up momentum. So quick to get their attack into gear. And the eye this time standing in midfield and unable to keep the momentum going. But such is the outlook of French rugby. Such positivity to the way that they want to play the game. Even in conditions that are Less than conducive, you would have thought, to attacking rugby. They haven't stopped. I think that's credit to the uh, the French skill set. You know, the basic process of the catch and pass. It, for them, it's just unfazed even when the weather is bad. 
Houdon kicks long, this time it's out to Jess Kavanaugh-Williams. Being shepherded out towards that far line, but still she goes on. A wholehearted effort from the left winger through the course of this evening, both in defence and attack. The last throws of this Six Nations for Wales and France. Wales unable to breach this French defence. Caroline Thomas penalised. Just confirming that Wales can kick it straight out. Of course, this season it means that the line-out has to take place even though the clock is in the red. Well, just for one moment, Philippa, let's talk about France. Deserved winners, Grand Slam winners, and they're going to receive rightfully all the plaudits. Yeah, absolutely. They've had a great Six Nations tournament. You know, the battle against England last week was just epic. And for, for women's rugby, it was just a fantastic exhibition game. They've taken their chances. They've scored with flair. They've shown skill throughout the park. Absolutely rightful winners and uh, Grand Slam heroes as well. Welsh line out not producing the ball that they wanted. The ball is sent out towards the Irish Sea. And once again, France celebrate. This time, they can celebrate their third Women's Six Nations in the last five years, their fifth Grand Slam. Home and away, they've come and conquered. They are once again the Six Nations champions, Europe's top dogs. Well-deserved acclaim for the ladies in blue. Final score here, Wales 3, France 38, and a standing ovation from the stands. It has been a supreme performance from the team from Samuel Chirouk and Olivier Lievremont that has left the table looking like that. 140 points difference, 25 tries they've run in. It has been a phenomenal performance from the, the team from France and they the now can really enjoy their night the in North Wales because they're going to have one Wales big trophy team. to put France back into their hand it. luggage on France the way back home. This year's Grand Slam winners and as you can see will be presented with a beautiful trophy which signifies that this year they are the champions. So, Guilherme, understandably emotional. What a, an inspirational choice she's been as captain leading this young French team. I think their average age is only 24, so much ahead of them. But what an impressive season it's been for them. Yeah, and you can see that with their ambition to just attack everything, you know. That's kind of their, their youthful mindset. Just go for it. You know, they're not carrying any hang-ups. They haven't got any history in their minds. They are just playing, they're enjoying, and they're taking every opportunity. And now they're reaping the rewards of it. Well, you can see what it means to these young ladies. They were so disappointed after Ireland that they only came away with the bronze, having beaten USA in that bronze medal match but humble and hungry they have remained as they've said throughout this campaign game by game they've worked and worked and built and built and having overcome probably their toughest challenge of course last week in Grenoble up against England Olivier Lievremont there knew that they had just one more game to lift themselves for and produce and the half dozen tries they've produced here in Colwyn Bay means that they are going to be celebrating tonight and for some while to come, I would suggest. And they should rightfully be enjoying it. Yeah, absolutely. There'll be some celebrations tonight. I just hope they stay out of the sea. <laughs> for Wales, well, disappointment that they only had the Scottish game, which they ended victorious, but they've had shoots of great potential they've had phases of play they've been able to get some momentum but they haven't been able to execute execute in the critical areas i.e the opposition 22 and points would have meant so much in in each different game where they've had that particular opportunity yeah absolutely and as i mentioned at the uh 
the top of the game here that the message from camp from uh, Karis Phillips was very much keep ball, starve the French of the ball. And, and that's all good and, and true. And in, in parts, they really managed to do that. But it's not just good enough to keep that ball. You've got to then capitalize on that possession. And unfortunately, we didn't quite do that. Well, Roland Phillips knew that they had to had to make sure that they learnt in the bigger picture. Let's hear from him now as his thoughts at the end of this Six Nations campaign. Well, Roland, your initial reaction after that final whistle? Yeah, obviously disappointed. You, you know, you always with a loss, but um, you know, I, I thought you know we asked the girls for the game uh, to, to um, front up to the battle to leave everything on the pitch and I can't criticise any of them. I thought every player put their hand up and, and, and really put their bodies on the line for Wales. And how will you assess the whole campaign, remembering, of course, you are building towards the next World Cup? Yeah, well, that's the key thing. You know, So I think when we look back on the, this campaign, uh, as far as performance is concerned, we certainly showed enough there to have a lot of confidence going forward. Tonight is uh, no exception to that. And I think with the results, there's a bit of frustration in there. Um, I definitely, when I even looking back, that Ireland and Italy could have been could have been W's for us. But you know, we can't dwell on that. We just got to look forward. Thank you. Okay. Well, as ever, a healthy dose of realism from Roland Phillips. He knows what this season was about. There's Sandrine Agricole, former French fly half herself, now the physio for the team, enjoying the moment with these youngsters who are taking French rugby forward. There's Marjorie Mayons. No doubt you'll be meeting her in the sevens field before too long. She'll have to be moving on from Grand Chalem to uh, Commonwealth sevens and World Series as well. Yeah, absolutely. Had the um, privilege of playing against her on a few occasions. Fantastic athlete. Um, that strength and power she brings to a, to a sevens team, it uh, it's really is part of their attack. Great, great player. Well, you can see the enjoyment now, the relief really for these girls because it has been a long campaign, albeit with Fallow Weeks built into it, of course. They've been trying to keep level-headed, not let things get carried away. Safi and Yai, so experienced. Now they're going to step forward and get their medals from Pat Whelan, the Six Nations cha chairman, and Gareth Davis, the Welsh Rugby Union chairman, hanging out, handing out the medals. And supporters from both sides giving due appreciation for the efforts of the visitors. Jesse Tremulier, one of the stars of the tournament, top point scorer. And really, you saw how much France missed her in the World Cup when she had that fractured pelvis. <laughs> well, the T-shirt's being handed out as they set themselves up behind the boards ready for the final presentation, the presentation that will mean so much to the entire French squad, coaches and everybody else. Celine Ferrer finding her position very quickly. And congratulating the women who are the playing rugby. Coaches also move up as well. Here it comes. Here's the trophy that is going to mean so much. Pat Whelan steps forward to award the women's Six Nations trophy to Les Bleus. It is the Grand Chelem for Les Bleus, Grand Slam champions, France 2018. Well, the bottles are opened, the celebrations start, and those girls are going to have a night. Well, I was going to say that they will never forget. They may well forget immediately, <laughs> but 
they will certainly remember this day. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, when you're, you're building through your Six Nations campaigns, it doesn't matter how good the wins are in the early stages, you just get them done and you move on to the next job and the next job and the next job. And we've seen how clinical uh, the French have been and how they've adopted that attitude. So when you do get that win, you are the champions. That's when you start to cut loose. So France take gold, they are going to be singing into the night here in North Wales. A triumphant performance from the ladies in blue. They have the Grand Chelem of 2018 as we bid you adieu from Colwyn Bay. It is France who are Grand Slam champions of the Women's Six Nations 2018. And now we need to await the next in this double header, the under 20 men, men who again will be taking on France. Mantra from Gaffi and Bolivia, they'll come into Gemma, Sandonov, Emma, Em, Sandin Zipwell, and Mike Powell. We're so lucky that North Wales can host so many wonderful games. See the champions playing here in Colwyn Bay. Wales on the toss. Uh, next next uh, week so uh, so we have to win to, uh, to to win the tournament so we know we know it's a very hard game today it's a very very tough game we know uh, our Wales team lost uh, next week too so last week so, sorry uh, so um, we know we know the context and uh, uh, we know where we are and how have the team been preparing for this game? You've mentioned that defeat by England last weekend. How have they reacted to that and how are you hoping well, they've reacted? So, so, so the first day was difficult because uh, uh, the game is in, was in France. So against England, the crunch, you know, you know the, 